Hey there, my name is Michael Lynn from the MongoDB podcast, available on all podcast networks. Just search for MongoDB and you'll find it. Today, I'm going to show you how to leverage the MongoDB data API. In a previous project, I created a data API using MongoDB Realm, and it took me only about 10 minutes. We're gonna do the same today, but we're gonna leverage the MongoDB data API. It's a brand new product, it's available in preview. In order to follow this tutorial, you're going to need a MongoDB Atlas account, and you're going to need a MongoDB Atlas cluster. So if you don't have those things, pause the video, head on over to cloud.mongodb.com, sign up, register for free, and launch a database cluster. You can choose any size cluster. Um, M0, the free tier, will work for this example. And it's free, free forever. Don't even have to pull out a credit card. So go ahead and do that. I'll be here when you're done. Okay, by now you should have an Atlas account and an Atlas cluster, and we're gonna get started. Now, I've done a few things ahead of time, so I'm gonna be showing you what I did and expecting you to follow along doing the same thing. The first thing that we want to do is launch a free tier instance. Part of the registration process in MongoDB Atlas walks you through that, so if you've already done that, that's great. My cluster is called Data API cluster, ironically. And uh, I chose an M10 size, but you can use an M0 size cluster. That's fine too. Um, so there's not going to be any data in that cluster, but we're going to need some data in order to demonstrate the data API. So when, you, when your cluster finishes loading, you'll see something similar to what's on my screen now. Uh, there's a set of buttons, connect, view monitoring, browse collections, and a set of ellipsis. Go ahead and click this, the ellipsis and choose load sample data set. And you'll see it's about 350 megabytes of sample data distributed over a number of databases. It's a great way to, uh, to look at different schemas and different ways of setting up your databases. So go ahead and click load sample data set. I've already done that, so I'm not going to click it, but uh, it will take between three and five minutes. So if you need to, to pause the, the video once again, go ahead and do that. And I'll be here waiting. Okay, by now you should have deployed a cluster and loaded the sample data sets. Let's go ahead and take a look at what those look like. You're gonna come back into the main database deployments page and click the browse collections button. Here we see the sample data sets. These are databases. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight databases and a number of collections. And today we're gonna to work with sample underscore supplies, but you can choose any database that you want. Let's take a look at the documents inside the sample supplies database and the sales collection. It's good to know the structure and the fields that exist in the documents within your collection. For this data, database and collection, we see a, an array of items that have been purchased, the sale date that they were purchased, the store location, a customer object, and some other data, coupon used and purchase method. Now, we're gonna create a, a little uh, data API that exposes this data first. So we'll do a read operation. Now, uh, all of the CRUD commands are available via the data API, but let's first focus on the read. In order to do that, we need to enable the data API. So well, let's visit the brand new left-hand menu navigation item labeled Data API. Click that. The first thing you'll notice is a set of tabs, Data API, API keys, and logs. And then you'll see a URL endpoint. This is gonna be the endpoint that we use to execute our Data API commands. Uh, you should note that it's got a common beginning across all cluster instances. And then it has something that's custom based on your specific cluster instance. That's this here. Just note that for now. Nothing to, to copy or, or memorize at the moment. The next thing you'll see is a list of data sources. Now these correspond to the clusters in your MongoDB Atlas account. I created a specific cluster called Data API Cluster, and that's what we're gonna focus on right now. I need to enable the Data API before I can begin using it. So here, I'll find the Data API Enabled column, and I'll toggle the off button to on. And it tells us that uh, it'll allow data to be accessed by anyone with the appropriate API key, which we haven't created yet, but hang on, we'll do that in a moment. Go ahead and click Enable. 
Now this will take approximately three to five minutes to complete. You can check the status of that by clicking the automation status. But I'm going to go ahead and pause and I'll be right back. Okay, enabling the data API has completed. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an API key. This is going to be passed in as a part of a call to the data API. To do that, let's click the API key tab. And here I've created a couple as a part of testing. I'm going to delete this one and create a new one. Uh, so let's click the Create API Key. I'll label it Data API Test. And I'll click the Generate API Key button. OK, it's going to give us the API key, which we're going to need to copy, because we'll need that in a few moments. So click the Copy button. And uh, maybe you can use text edit or whatever your favorite text editing tool is, paste that in, and we'll move that to the side while we continue. Click the close button, and now we want to uh, focus on the data that we're going to, to capture. We'll move that to the side, and now I want you to click the test your API button. This will open up a dialog that's going to allow us to specify the collection that we're going to test. So the first question is the cluster. Now I called my cluster data API cluster. The data that I want to work with is in the sample underscore supplies database in the sales collection. Now notice what's happening here. As I type in the collection field, you might notice what's happening here down in the, um, in the snippet box. It's building out the test for us. The only thing it doesn't do is include the actual API key for security purposes. Now that we've built this sample uh, curl command, um, notice that you can change the language. It'll build an example for you based on your favorite language. So you can, you can use Node.js, and it also leverages the Axios library there. But today, let's just focus on the curl command, and we'll execute this from a command line. You will need to have the cur curl command available. So if you don't have that installed yet, um, you can go ahead and install that and come back, and we'll be ready. Once you have curl installed, let's go ahead and copy the example command. We'll go back to our trusty text edit, and I'm going to paste this in. Notice uh, that it's uh, calling our API endpoint. We're in the context of our cluster, so it knows which endpoint we're working with. Notice that we're, we're working with JSON. So it's passing in a header stating that the content type that we're going to be working with is JSON. It's going to pass in some access control headers. And here's where we specify the API key. Now, we copied that earlier. So go ahead and copy that again and paste that right over the brackets API key and we should be good to go. So what this is doing is it's using the find one command. So we're passing to the endpoint, and the method is going to be find one in the API. And then we'll pass in our data along with our data raw, which specifies uh, the database context that we're working with. So next, we'll copy this curl command, open a command line. And uh, you will need curl installed. So to test that, you can do curl dash dash help. Make sure you have that installed. It might say no command found. If that's the case, again, you'll need to install curl. Once we do that, we can create a script. Uh, my favorite editor is Vi. Uh, you can use uh, Nano or whatever editor you're most familiar with. I'll call it test.shell. And I'll specify that this is a shell command. And I'll paste in my curl. Should be good to go. Uh, one last thing I want to note here is we've passed in the data to our endpoint. We're specifying the database and the collection and the data source, the cluster name, as well as a projection statement. This is saying that we only want to return the ID. So we're projecting only the ID to be on. I'll write that, 
and let's go ahead and give it a test. And there we have it. This is a document in the sa sample supplies database in the sales collection. And we can verify this by copying the actual ID document that was returned. We'll move this guy out of the way and this guy out of the way. We'll come back to our Atlas instance and we'll browse to our databases in my data API cluster. Browse collections, sample supplies, sales collection, and right in the filter field, we can specify the document that was returned and click apply. Zero items found. Now you may find this, and the reason that this is happening is because we are specifying an object ID. So we'll need to tell MongoDB that this is an object ID. You can do that by wrapping the actual ID in an object ID statement. And there we have our document. So what, what have we done? We've enabled the data, data API and we've specified a uh, find one command to find one single document in the database, in the sample underscore supplies database in the sales collection. Super easy. Next, let's focus on creating a document. Now, in order to create a document, we're gonna need to approximate what a document might look like in this database. And again, this is all fictional, so it really shouldn't matter, but uh, let's make it look like a document that already exists. Now we can do that by coming back to our Atlas console, looking at the document that we found in the database, and you can copy this document. This will place the contents of this document into our paste buffer. And if we want to uh, use a text editor, it's probably easiest. I like to use Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever you're most comfortable with, even VI if you like. Uh, but here we have Visual Studio Code. I've opened uh, a code instance in that directory where I created my curl command using test.sh. I'm going to create a new file and I'll call this test.json. This is going to be a JSON document and I'll paste in the previous document that we found. What I like about uh, Visual Studio Code is it has built-in formatting for JSON. I can select the entire document and choose to format the document. This will give us a nice pretty display of the entire document. Now I'm going to expand this here so you can see it better. So let's just make a modification. We'll say that we bought a baseball bat and this is going to be sports equipment in the tags price is going to be about forty nine dollars and one cent and i'll purchase one these are all the the other documents that were created uh, i'm going to modify the customer name i'll put my age Put my email address and my satisfaction is a five. Okay, we've sufficiently modified the document so that you'll know and we can search for it. Um, I'll go ahead and save this. And I need to somehow pass this to the data API in order for it to insert or create a document in the database. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna open a terminal window right inside code. And uh, that's going to be where we execute the curl command that passes this document over. Um, I want to uh, create a new curl command that looks a lot like this, but I'm, instead of using the find one, I'm going to use the insert one. So I'll copy this entire document. I'll create a new command uh, shell, and I'll call it insert.sh. I'll paste that in. And again, instead of find one, I want to insert one. So I've modified the method that I'm calling on this endpoint. I'm gonna pass the same headers, same API key, and I'm gonna pass in the context elements in the data raw, but I'm going to specify that 
my document. Pass in the document field. And here's where I'm going to build that document. So I'll go back to my test.json. I'll copy that entire thing. Go back to my insert. And let's paste that in here. And that should be good to go. It's hard to tell if I've inserted that correctly, but I think everything should work. Note that I'm enclosing the data raw in a single quote, and my fields are specified by double quotes. That'll be important because you don't want to mix those up. And we should be good to go. So I'll save that, insert. I'll come back to my command line here. You can see my insert is in this directory. And let's go ahead and execute that. Failed to insert document duplicate key. OK, that's because we didn't modify the document to uh, remove this ID. We don't want to be able to insert a document with the same object ID. So go ahead and remove the entire ID field there. Save that, and let's try again. It says inserted ID. So it did create a new ID. And to prove this, we can come back to our Atlas instance. We can change the find command that we previously executed to find the previous object ID and paste in the new object ID that I just created. Click Apply. And there we see it's been inserted. Let's look at the customer, my age, my email address. Sure enough, the document has been inserted. So I think this is sufficient. Uh, we've gotten you started with reading documents and creating documents. Uh, the rest is up to you. There is some great documentation on the MongoDB documentation site. I can take you there to take a quick, quick peek. Search for MongoDB Atlas Data API Docs, and it'll bring you to uh, read and write with the Data API. Now down here, you get some really great examples. Insert a test document, which we just did. Find that document. Delete a document. You get the idea. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. I hope that you'll find the Data API useful. Check out the MongoDB podcast. It's available on all podcast networks, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, uh, Amazon, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Um, and if you do enjoy this content, make sure you like, give a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think, subscribe to the podcast, leave a rating on the podcast, and check out the MongoDB community site at community.mongodb.com. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, everybody.